This unit is called motion in a plane. The first lesson of this unit is about horizontal projectiles. Projectile motion is when an object is projected, that is thrown or launched or something like that, near Earth's surface and travels in a curved path only under the influence of the force of gravity. The path of a projectile is described as being parabolic. This means like a parabola. The type of projectile motion that we're going to start with is horizontal projectiles. This is the case where an object is launched from a height in the direction that is parallel to the ground. This means that the initial vertical velocity is zero. At the very beginning, it's not heading upward at all and it's not heading downward at all. So we're going to remember that VIY equals zero. Here's an example. Let's take a look at a problem like that in detail. Whatever speed the object is moving when it becomes a projectile is the initial horizontal velocity, or VIX. The projectile is launched from some height, which we'll call dy, right? That's vertical displacement. And it ends up with some horizontal displacement, which we call range. We have to remember that the initial vertical velocity, VIY, is equal to zero meters per second. And we also have to remember that vertically, gravity is pulling down on the car. This means that AY, the vertical acceleration, is going to be 9.81 meters per second squared. Horizontally, once the car becomes a projectile, there are no forces pushing it forward or pulling it backwards. If there's no forces, that means there's no acceleration. So AX, the horizontal acceleration, is 0 meters per second squared. Let's say in this example problem that the car was originally traveling 30 meters per second, and lands a distance of 100 meters away from the edge of the cliff. Let's try to figure out how tall the cliff is. As you can see, there's a lot of information here. We have all of the variables we're used to from uniform accelerated motion problems, but now they're duplicated. We have horizontal values for them and we have vertical values for them. What's going to be really important for us is to have good organization. Rather than just making a list of givens, we're going to organize our information in a table like this. You should definitely copy this table into your notes. Let's see where all the numbers from our problem fit. Well, first of all, since this is a horizontal projectile problem, we know three things. We know that the horizontal acceleration is zero and the vertical acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared. We also know that the initial vertical velocity is zero. Those three boxes will always be the same for every horizontal projectile problem. From this specific problem, we know that the initial horizontal velocity is 30 meters per second, and we know that the horizontal displacement, or the range, is 100 meters. You'll notice that the time row is not divided. That's because time is a scalar quantity. There's no such thing as vertical time or horizontal time, and that's actually really great for us. This means that if we have enough information in the x column, or we have enough information in the y column to calculate the time, we can then use that value for the time in the other column. In this specific problem, we have enough information in the x column. We know enough about the horizontal motion of this object to figure out how long it took to travel 100 meters horizontally if it was originally traveling at 30 meters per second and moved with an acceleration of zero. We're going to be using our UAM equations here. So we have D, V, I, A, and we're looking for T. So we're going to use the equation D equals V, I, T plus one half A, T squared. You'll notice that I added in subscripts of X. You don't always have to do that, but my hope is that if we do include those, we will be sure to include only values from the X column when we substitute. 
So we have 100 meters equals 30 meters per second times the time plus one half of zero times t squared. If we solve that for t, we find that it took 3.3 seconds for that car to hit the ground. This means that it took 3.3 seconds to travel 100 meters horizontally, but it also took the car 3.3 seconds to travel its vertical displacement, which we'll calculate now. It turns out that we're going to use the same equation. You see this time I changed the x subscripts to the y subscripts. Again, we want to make sure that we only use numbers from one column or the other. If we plug in our initial velocity and our time and our acceleration, we find that the vertical displacement is 53.4 meters. This is otherwise known as the height of the cliff. You try one. Let's say that we have a billiard ball that rolls horizontally off a 0.75 meter high table with a velocity of 12 meters per second. A picture of this would look something like that. I want you to figure out how far away from the table the ball would land. Here are some tips. First of all, and most importantly, organize your information in the table. Remember that you already know the vertical and horizontal accelerations and the initial vertical velocity. Finally, when you're doing your calculations, make sure that you only use numbers from the X column or the Y column at a time. Let's take a look at the vertical velocity, the horizontal velocity, and the vertical acceleration at various points during a horizontal projectile's path. This first point is when it just leaves the table before it's had a chance to gain any vertical velocity. So it has some initial horizontal velocity, and now that it is in free fall, it has an acceleration, that is the acceleration due to gravity. A little while later, it still has the same horizontal velocity. There's nothing making it speed up or slow down, remember? And its vertical acceleration is still 9.81. At this point, however, it's had a chance to gain at least a little bit of vertical speed. So there's a little tiny vy. As we progress, you'll see that the horizontal velocity and the vertical acceleration remain constant, but the vertical velocity increases. As it travels, it gets faster and faster toward the ground. Once again, Vx and Ay are the same, but Vy is bigger. Let's take a look at them all together. In summary, the initial vertical velocity of a horizontal projectile is zero. Viy equals zero meters per second. The vertical acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity. So Ay equals 9.81 meters per second squared downward. The horizontal acceleration is zero. So Ax equals zero meters per second squared 